Hey, what's up, Minutemen? Kevin here, and welcome back to Ark Survival, and welcome to Kevin MMP. <laughs> the second channel is born. Thank you guys for coming over and checking things out over here. This is going to be the first video that's uploaded independently onto the second channel here of Kevin MMP, which will be here for all of your gaming and variety show type content needs. Uh, yeah, all the other stuff is being carried over from the main channel of Minute Minecraft Parodies, and now this will be the first episode being uploaded on its own. So, welcome everybody, and welcome. Welcome, Bruce. You are the rock upon which we shall build Kevin MMP. So, guys, we've got some uh, objectives lined up for today. A couple things in particular. So, I think our primary two objectives for today, guys, are one, I want to keep working towards getting all of the artifacts. So, there is a cave. There's a cave towards the center of the island. In fact, I think it is called the Central Cave, uh, where we can go and try to pursue one of those artifacts. I actually looked it up after the last episode because I wanted to see what the deal was with that glitch. If you guys saw the last episode, I went into, I believe, is the Lower South Cave. And every time we took more than like 10 steps into the cave, we just boop, glitched, went up to the surface. It kind of spazzed out on us. And I looked it up, and a few other people were complaining about the exact same issue. I think that it was just when they patched the game for one of the most recent patches, it created that glitch. So there has since been a minor update. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that has been fixed or not. But today I wanted to tackle the central cave anyways, just to make sure we don't encounter that glitch. I'll go back and check out the lower south cave another time uh, before we try to tackle that, just to make sure it's not a waste of our time. And let's see. So yeah, I wanted to go to the central cave, get that artifact, and then I wanted to come back here. Something that I feel like a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Oh, whoa, whoa. Swing and a miss. Easy. Easy, big fella. Um, these two lovebirds. It's been a while. <laughs> it was forever ago. I don't even know what episode it was. We tried to mate these two, and we had the fertilized egg and everything. Um, and I was just a very poor caretaker. I, <laughs> I would not be employed at Jurassic Park tending to the eggs. So I think we're gonna give that another shot. It took, it felt like forever. I remember back in the day it said like, oh, 24 real in-game hours until they're ready to mate again. But here we are. So these guys are ready to go. Dave and Mrs. Dave are ready to hop out of the sack again. So let's go take care of the central cave and then come back to these two, uh, this beautiful couple. But before we do that, let's do a little crafting. A little bit of everything, a little smorgasbord of things to experiment with an arc here. So what I want to do, something I've been talking about for a few episodes now, is build a GPS. So, pardon the noise, but I'm going to crank this thing up. Alright, good, so we got this thing running. And we actually need to learn a couple of engrams. Um, we need to learn electronics, because that's part of the recipe. Electronics, six engram points. Sold. And we also need to learn the GPS. I don't know if it's actually essential. Oh, we need to learn the compass first. Okay. Uh, compass. We've gotten by okay without the GPS. But, I mean, we've got all these anger points. We might as well blow through them again completely inappropriately so that we have to drink the Mind Wipe Tonic again. Uh, but let's learn this because I really would like to experiment with it. They give you exact coordinates for the caves and things like that. Uh, so this should make it a little bit easier to find, hopefully. Uh, okay, so we've learned both of those. Now we ought to be able to come into the fabricator here. And let me just check the recipe really... Oh, actually, it should right be in here, right? Electronics. How many do we need, though? Navigation. The GPS requires 20 electronics. And we should have more than enough to make that. Electronics, we have enough for 33. I'm just going to make all that we need for now. There we go. 20 electronics. And we should be all set. So, navigation, GPS. Let's crank it up. And then crank it down, because that noise always drives me crazy. So sweet, we've got our GPS, where can we throw this? Uh, let's put it in with the spyglass for now. You can always pull that back out if we need it. Alright, so let's see. Let's see if we press 8 and pull up the GPS. Ah, look at that! So handy. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so let's actually pull it up. Let's see what the exact coordinates are we need to get to. So the central cave resides at latitude 39.6 and uh, longitude 45.9. So we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us. Um, from what I've read about the cave, it's one of the hardest caves in the game. Alright, that's a lie. <laughs> I've actually read that it's one of the easiest caves in the game. 
But let's just pretend like it's the hardest, okay? So I can feel like I achieved something extra special. Give myself a gold star at the end of today. Uh, regardless, we do have to get the artifact. And from what I read, I believe that Hodor might just be able to fit. I think that Hodor can fit, Randy can fit, uh, Ghost can kind of fit, but supposedly he can get stuck at a few different points. And we might, we probably don't even need the mounts, to be honest, but... For the sake of obvious reasons, if you are a Game of Thrones viewer, I feel like we need to take Hodor along for this journey. So, let us grab a bird person. Let me see, is there anything else that we need to do before we go? Yes, there is one thing that we need to do. Our inventory is all stocked up, we get everything we need, we got our shotgun, uh, bug repellent just in case in the cave, but there is one thing we need to do. So if we beat ourselves into a bloody pulp, strip off all of our armor, climb up to the tippity top of the great stairway to Bruce, and then just take about 20 good steps in this direction, we ought to be able to plummet to our death. <laughs> and then all of our dinos would devour Bruce's corpse. And now we're ready. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. I was hoping that I was going to be able to put the, um, the hunter hat skin on top of Hodor here, but I guess we can't apply skins. We can just give him a regular old hat. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close over here. So close I can smell it. That smelly kind of smell. That smelly kind of central cave smell that smells cavey. All right, so the latitude is just about spot on. Right there. All right, so if we turn it a little bit north from here, Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> That's the latitude. This is the longitude. Alright, so we want it at 39.6. And then we want it down to 45. Alright, so cave entrance ought to be right around over here somewhere. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> There's the cave entrance right here. Okay. Uh, so let's set her down. Set her down nice and easy. Let's, uh, let's clear the area. So the quick bag doesn't have any problems while we're away. Okay, so I think finally we are in the clear. Now that we've massacred all the bugs, now hopefully, dear God, nothing else comes over here while we are inside the cave. Oh yes, yes. Hungry boy. All right, Hodor. Come on, let me, uh, I wish I could give him a weapon. I wish I could hand him the sword. You can't, can you? No. <laughs> That'd be pretty fantastic if you could. Uh, all right, so let's pull out the shotgun. So we've got what we need at the ready. Um... I don't know. I'm going to hold off on the bug spray for now. But let's go ahead inside the cave and see what kind of trouble we're going to have to deal with. Oh, yeah. I kept you set on follow. Uh, you can now stay. Stay, Queequeg. Just don't fly away, okay? No wandering. So, first impressions. Lots of glowy mushrooms. Nothing trying to kill us right away. It's a good sign. Either a good sign or a terrible sign, and they're trying to lure us into the depths where there's no escape. Oh, do we have to go this way? Um, can you come, Hodor? Can you follow? I don't know if he's gonna fit. Oh, looks like he won't fit. Oh, what a waste. <laughs> Did I really take this risk for nothing? Oh, I really wanted to bring Hodor on this adventure. But I may have brought him and Queequeg up here into the shiz for nothing. Unless there's another way down, maybe this way? Oh, you could probably fit this way, huh? Come on, buddy. Yeah, it said on the wiki that they'd be able to fit. Alright, cool. Here we go. Watch there not even be a single enemy in here. <laughs> Just going for a stroll in the cave. Come on, buddy. Come on, Hodor. Oh, maybe he can't fit through... Okay, okay, we're good. It's really more hassle than it's worth to bring Hodor along for this mission. <laughs> Because <laughs> if, if I get attacked, he's going to try to fight off whatever's attacking us. And then I'm going to end up shooting him in the face trying to defend us. But I just really wanted to bring him along for an adventure. Is that it? Is that it right there? <laughs> Seriously? Wait, what is that over there? Why does that look like there are two different things? Unless maybe those aren't the artifacts? I kind of forget. It's been a few episodes, and we've only claimed one of them. But it has been a few episodes since then. I don't think that's it. No, this is just like... Loot crates. Yeah, this is just a random... Loot crate? With a hide hat? 
<laughs> what do you think, buddy? It almost seems like that was meant for you. Would you like a hide hat, Hodor? Make this quest memorable? A little souvenir for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Hodor. After this, you can go and battle the Red Baron, <laughs> you misplaced and giant guerrilla World War One fighter pilot. Come on, buddy. Come on. Or are we supposed to go that way through the water? Maybe we're supposed to go that way. We'll come around this way. So I swear I saw another one over this way. Yeah, right here. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the, um... The who's it, what's this? The artifact. Kind of looks like it. Artifact container. Yeah, alright. Artifact of the clever. <laughs> Took a lot of cleverness to obtain this artifact. Whew, are you guys impressed? I'm gonna sleep well tonight. I'm gonna feel like a hero. <laughs> Come on, Hodor. Away we go. Well, guys. Oh. Do I look upset? Ark always finds a way. <laughs> in our highest highs and our lowest lows. More in the highest highs. In the lowest lows, it, it does tend to show a little bit of mercy, although it will occasionally kick us while we're down. But after that triumphant conquering of the cave, <clears throat> the game just completely crashed. I don't know at this point if the remainder of the episode, like everything that we just recorded, is actually going to be intact. Sometimes when the game glitches out and crashes, uh, the recording software, DX Tori, doesn't write all of like the outro part of the file so the whole thing is just corrupt but hopefully that part of the episode is still intact <laughs> um, if not we basically um, well if it is I'll skip ahead if not here's what happened and that brings us up until now so um, I've scoured the area fortunately Hodor was still here he was outside of the cave um, but Queequeg is nowhere to be found. So, I don't know what happened. He may very well have flown off. I mean, I didn't see anything saying that he was killed, but I'm kind of thinking that he probably glitched out. So, here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, guys. And I hope that you forgive me for this. But I think <laughs> to spare us from losing the Quetzal and from having to make the incredibly long journey back on Bigfoot, on Bigfoot foot, then I think I'm probably going to spawn in a Quetzal. <clears throat> if I remember right, Queequeg was level 30, I want to say 33, I'm not sure, but I think I might spawn in a 33 Quetzal. And then, if I'm wrong, if it didn't glitch out, and someday we do come across the original Queequeg, then we can just kill the spare and use uh, <laughs> the original. But, <laughs> hopefully I'm making sense and speaking clearly. The game just, it rips your heart out. It really does with these glitches. So, give me a few seconds, guys. I gotta figure out how to spawn in a, uh, a Queequeg here. Queequeg. Alright, come here, buddy. <laughs> Are you just gonna fly away? What the hell? Come back here. There he goes. Okay, he's coming back. I thought I could see as he flies. I guess the way that it works, when you use the tame command, I don't know if it tames them as if it was a 100% perfect tame efficiency. Because um, I punched in like <laughs> the first one I did. <laughs> you guys wanna see this? <laughs> There's a dead Quetzal over here. <laughs> because we had to kill off one. Um, that we tamed and it was like level 50 something. Uh, so this one is level 37. Uh, so now we just need a saddle. Okay, added primitive Quetzal saddle. So if you can, come just a little bit closer, dear. Okay, let's grab Hodor. And head on home. You know guys, I'm gonna take a positive spin on this. 
<laughs> As you look at me watching the map instead of watching the GPS. It's easier, okay? Okay? Is that what you want to hear? That I wasted the anger points on the GPS? I'm hoping that the GPS, it probably will be useful in terms of finding the caves and stuff like that. That's me being optimistic. <laughs> but in terms of navigating back to the uh, the homestead, it's actually kind of easier using just the pillars for guidance as well as the map. But anyways, as I was saying, me taking a positive spin on this, I'm going to say that every glitched out death brings new life. That the original Queek Wake had to go so that a new Dodo baby could be joining our family in the next few minutes here. All right, so Queequeg the Imposter is all nice and safe behind the walls. Hodor, great work out there today, buddy. Real proud of you. Now, let's see. I feel like, whoa, whoa, hey now. Hold, hold, hold there, hold there. There we go. All right, everybody just settle down. We got to take care of this Rex because I don't like how it's prowling around. Especially after what we've experienced today. We don't need a couple more glitches warping that thing into our base. Not that it would last very long against this formidable force, the family. But, still, let's just go take care of business for a second. Take out a little bit of pent-up rage from what just happened. Oh, hi there. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back here. I don't think so. Just because we look alike doesn't mean I'm going to have any mercy on you. And let's scoop up the meat. Alright, beautiful. So that's done. Now, where were we? Uh, let's pump the gamma just a touch. Alright, Artifact of the Clever. Right next to Artifact of the Massive. <laughs> I hope you were damn well worth it. Uh, I guess we can't actually position this in... Here, okay. Well, it is where it is. So, on to the cheerier news of today. We got to make some dodo babies. So, we've got to set them both to water. I was reading up on this. Um, got to set them both to water. We can't hold them in place by being encumbered. So, we just kind of have to mash on. We either have to pen them up. Uh, but I think that I'm probably just going to put them right next to each other. Set them to wander. And then just keep mashing on all stay. Because I think they stay for like a short time and then they try to wander, but you can just keep hitting the key and they won't move very far. Uh, so, alright. Let's give this a shot. Or actually, you know what? Yeah, by the time they lay the egg, it should be daytime. I was gonna say the dodo eggs, there's this whole science to it, if you guys aren't aware. <laughs> there's this whole, there's like graphs and charts and everything on the Gamepedia showing the ideal temperature to hatch the egg, because that was the problem last time. I wasn't keeping the egg incubated properly. And they have dinos that you can use. Well, let's actually, let's get this started, and I'll kind of explain it as we're doing it. So, all right. Let's enable you to wander. Let's enable you to wander. All right. Yep, okay, they're mating. Let's keep our finger over you. Mating progress, okay. So we can actually see the bar filling up. Awesome. I love being able to see the progress. So yeah, there are dinos that you can actually use like the uh, penguin and the... Uh, I looked it up so that I would say this right, and I think I'm gonna butcher it. Dimetrodon? I think maybe I got it right. The Dimetrodon. It's like the sail-backed looking lizard thing. And that's actually a lot better at it than the penguin is. <laughs> Dave's getting excited. He wants to lay some stuff too. Check it out, honey. I've got poop. And those things can actually insulate the eggs if they're within a certain proximity. And then there's also things like the air conditioner, which we're kind of using these two. We're using Dave and Mrs. Dave as sort of guinea pigs because the other friendly couple that we have, the Rexes, Coco and uh, and Stud, whatever your name is, the the other imposter, the imposter iced tea, uh, we'll probably try to mate them relatively soon and I just kind of wanted to try it with these guys first to get a little bit more bit more experience with breeding so that hopefully we won't butcher it with the Rexes and then we would have to wait 24 plus real hours in game before we could try mating them again um, so when it does come to them we'll probably get either a Dimetrodon or maybe by that point we'll even have air conditioners which work the best uh, so we'll see we'll see how well we do with this and how difficult it is I'm hoping that just by using fires and keeping a very close watch of them, we'll be able to have our first birth of the family. 
So, fingers crossed, guys. Looks like the mating's almost done here, so as soon as it is, we'll scoop up the egg. We'll keep a close eye on it. We'll see. I think if I remember right from before, it shows us exactly, like, what, uh, what the problem is. You know, like, it's too hot, it's too cold. So we ought to be able to find the right balance, especially where we've got about 1,500 fire pits on our roof. There it is! There it is! Okay, um, where is it? I just saw it. Yeah, that's it. Pick up, pick it up, pick it up. Egg health, egg incubation. Um, it doesn't say anything. It says incubating. Let me get rid of that other egg if I can. What do you think, Mrs. Davey? You ready? You ready to be a mom? It says incubating. So I think we can kind of just watch it. I'm pretty sure that that's the area where it said last time, like, overheating or freezing or whatever. Too cold. Too cold. Quick, what happens if we stoke up some of these fires? Oh no, we're unprepared. Quick, scoop it up, scoop it up, scoop it up, scoop it up. All right, I think I got it. And I'm going to grab that one too. And let's see, we need to find... Do we have any wood? We got some thatch. All right, let's grab some of this thatch. We got all kinds of thatch. If we light these fires, I don't know if these are actually going to work. Let's find out. Or if we have to take it up to the roof where the other fires go. Uh, let's set this down. <laughs> just throw it. Just heave the egg at the floor. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, incubating. Okay. So, unless the sun coming up in those last few seconds actually made a difference in the air temperature, I think that these fires will actually work to heat it up. So with any luck, we'll be able to keep it down here with Mr. and Mrs. Dave. <laughs> they can't watch, it's too stressful. Can we actually turn them around? That'd be, uh, that'd be much cuter if they could be watching. There you go. Come on. Come on, Dave. The expectant father. There he is. Oh yeah, he's pacing. He's pacing relentlessly. He can't take it. Incubating. Alright, so it looks like we've got a little bit of an incubation period to sit out here, guys. I'll keep you posted as we go through this. Uh, if there's any exciting happenings or if we have to move the egg or, you know, tinker with the room temp, set the thermostat a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Well, we are in the final stages here, guys. It's been a marathon. It's taken quite a while to get the incubation down at this point. We had a couple of minor little mishaps uh, where the fire went out and had to uh, quickly shove something in there. So we lost a little bit of egg health. But besides that, it's been a very smooth uh, dodo pregnancy, <laughs> bringing it to full term. So, yeah, it's definitely taken a lot out of me waiting for this thing to be ready, but I am still very excited to meet this little tyke. Should probably put the sword away, huh? Don't want the first thing the little guy sees to be a sword hovering over him with Bruce. Bruce of all people. It's gonna think that we're its mom. Quick, where? where where's Mrs. Dave? You imagine that? Bruce's face and chest and sword just hovering over you the moment you're born. Ah. Come here, Mrs. Dave. Here we go. That's it, Mom. That's it. That's it, Mom. There you go. All right. I'll hover over together. <laughs> I feel like Dave needs to get on on this, too. Come on, buddy. Come on. We're all one big happy family with two dads. Yep, that's it. No, no, no. Come on. Turn around. Turn around. Face him. There you go. All right, that's close enough. That's about... Oh, okay. I thought that was going to be the moment. <gasps> It's born! <laughs> quick, quick, quick! We have to imprint! We have to imprint! <laughs> oh, it's so cute! Oh, what are we gonna name it? All this time, I wasn't even thinking about names. Wait, what? What? Why was it killed? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, guys, today is just a day of heartbreak on all fronts. I guess I didn't feed him fast enough. That must have been the reason. That is crazy, though. I had the mayo berries and everything ready. 
I was gonna feed him. I didn't think that you literally had to feed him in the first 30 seconds or he would die. I thought there would be a window of maybe five minutes. Oh my god. Well, only 22 and a half hours until Mrs. Dave the Second is ready to try again. <laughs> Alright, I think ne next week, I don't know if we'll do it next, I mean not next week, but next episode. I don't know if we'll experiment again with a different species. We could just, we could just jump straight up for the Rexes. Sure. I mean, we did so well with the Dodos. <laughs> oh my god. We'll figure out some kind of a game plan. If you guys do have any ideas or tips as to what I did wrong, I'm pretty sure I just didn't feed it fast. It could have been the claiming, since I was thinking for a few seconds about the name. But, I don't know, it just happened so fast. It happened so fast. I don't know, man. But if you guys do have suggestions or, like, information about what may have happened there, then uh, please do let me know in the comments. <laughs> Welcome to the new channel, guys. Kevin MMP, where all of your babies can die and dreams come true. Uh, well, <laughs> regardless, we did achieve something today. Hopefully, we'll learn something from this. And we did get that artifact. Um, that that's that's really looking on the bright side, I guess. So, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, and as always, at ease, Minutemen.